In my hand, I have the iPhone 13 Pro and the iPhone 15 Pro. Which one is right for you? We'll figure it out. Now, I've been an iPhone user for a very long time. I would say when you're looking at the history of human communication, the iPhone is one of the most impressive tools that humanity has ever had. The fact of the matter is the iPhone is one of the tools that changed human history for all time, like all throughout history, people were able to communicate, they were able to write, but they weren't able to have all of human knowledge in their hands at one time. So when the iPhone came out, it absolutely transformed things. Now, a lot of people would say it didn't transform things for the better. Honestly, I think there's so many good things that have happened because of the release of the iPhone in 2007, but nobody can also argue that we're not more distracted than we are than ever before. But Today we're talking about the iPhone 13 and the iPhone 15 Pro. Now when you're holding these two devices in your hand, they feel pretty similar. I mean, it's not a huge size difference. They're roughly the same size, roughly the same weight. I mean, so much so that if you didn't have them both in your pocket, it'd be imperceptible. Now, as you can see on these phones, they both have three cameras. Now the iPhone 15 Pro, they did the thing with the multiple camera focal lengths um, on the one camera, but, but in reality, it's kind of just zooming in, so it's not that big of a deal. Like as you can see on these, they've got the three cameras, it's got a flashlight. This is the iPhone 15 Pro, this is the iPhone 13 Pro. Very, very similar. Obviously, this one's a bit more used. But the cameras on the 15 Pro did get kind of a cool upgrade this year. It comes with Apple Log, so if you're doing filmmaking and you want to film something with a lot of dynamic range, you should film in the Apple log mode. And all that means is that it's compressing the image. So your highlights have a ton of information and your shadows have a ton of information. It's the best if you're shooting outdoors, but it is a huge file. And so if you're going to shoot in that, that's only if you're making like a feature length kind of thing or like you're really, really into cinematography. For most people, the video cameras on these things are going to be fairly similar. Now I say fairly similar, I know people, some people push these phones to the max, but I just, you know, for the normal person, the person who's taking photos of their kids and all that, that's not going to be an issue for you between these two phones. Yes, I would say for photography, the 15 Pro is a better phone. However, if I'm looking back on all of my family photos, I don't know which ones I've taken with the 15 Pro, the 14 Pro, you know, the 13 Pro. I look at it for the memory, not for the humongous quality of the camera. Next up, as we can see on the screens, when you have the 15 Pro here, it's got at the top, the, what used to be the notch is now the dynamic island. Now what that's helpful for, if I go in and I'm creating some kind of timer, uh, say I wanna set a three minute timer, I start it, then I go back, up at the top of the screen, it has that timer. It's just a really helpful thing to have a small tool. Whereas when you're looking at the 13 Pro, it does not have that. It's not dynamic, it doesn't move, it's just a notch. Now when Apple released these phones with the notch, I thought it was ridiculous. Not as ridiculous as when they put it on the Mac, but it just doesn't look good. At least with the dynamic island, it's something that is a helpful tool when you're using it. If you have directions up, it also kind of changes directions for you. It's a really great thing if you're gonna have a camera that can't you know, see through the display. Maybe that's coming for Apple, I don't know. But I think the Dynamic Island is such a great upgrade compared to the 13 Pro. Next, I think we should talk about the single biggest upgrade that I feel like should push you. If you're on the 13 Pro, push you up to the 15 Pro, and that is USB-C. You see on these old iPhones, this right here is a lightning port. With that lightning port, it was a slower protocol. It was also a protocol that nothing else in the tech world was using, it was completely proprietary. And so that would frustrate people because not only did you have to bring multiple uh, cables with you when you travel, it also was just a slower kind of an antiquated port. Then Apple got into some trouble over in Europe and the whole world is so thankful for that because it really made things so much better for everybody and that's when Apple introduced the USB-C port on the iPhone 15 Pro. Now you might not be able to tell a huge difference due to the shape, but it is there. The functionality of this is so much better. Most of your devices nowadays charge with USB-C and so if you're traveling and you have your MacBook Pro with you, Having this USB-C is a game changer. It's also faster and it allows you to record with the iPhone 15 Pro on an external hard drive, which is really good for those people who are using Apple Log. And so overall, just that move to USB-C for some people would be enough, especially if they travel a lot, that's a, a pretty big game changer for them. So for me, I think it's worth it just because I really love having one single cable anywhere I go. Anytime I have my MacBook with me, I always have my charger with me. That means I can charge my iPhone at any time I want. As you can see with these phones, they both have the MagSafe charger on the back, which works great for me. I thought more people would be prone to using MagSafe, but apparently I was wrong. Apparently most people in the world, they love charging their phone by plugging it in. To me, I find that so annoying. 
I bought a Belkin charger that's by my nightstand. I just kind of pop it on there. And because it's magnetic, I don't really need to find the place for it. I just kind of like reach around and it ends up happening. And so I don't understand people who need to plug their phone in, but it is great that it has fast charging when you plug it in. However, for me, I love that they both have wireless charging. That also opens you up to a lot of other MagSafe accessories like the wallet and all that. Yes, the magnets aren't super, super, super strong, so you do kind of need to be cautious about what you put in and on the back of your phone, but it's still a handy tool. Now, another difference is right here. You have the old switch on the iPhone 13 Pro, and then on the new iPhone 15 Pro, you have a button. This action button is okay. If you hold it down, it does the action that you're looking for. I have it on silence my phone. I'll be honest with you, I have not touched it one single time since I got the iPhone 15 Pro. Like literally doing this video, that is the first time in the entire time I've had this phone that I've even touched the action button. I just don't ever use it. I am used to, you know, if I wanna do it for the camera or for the flashlight, I use both of those things all the time and, and it's been on my the front of my phone for so long and that's just, I'm a, a creature of habit and so I'm always gonna choose the front of my phone over the side of my phone. And so if you're somebody who's trying to upgrade to the new phone because of this feature, I just don't think it's worth it. I've heard a lot of people saying that they haven't used it either all that much and so I just don't think that that right there is going to be something that's worth upgrading and moving forward, spending all that money if you don't need to. Real quick before we move on, I have a wallpaper pack called Waves that I'm selling on my digital store. It's got a few different colors, different variations of what looks like Waves, and so if you like this background, go ahead, check it out, buy it. It's only $5 for a few of them, and that just really helps the channel out. The next thing we need to talk about is the battery life. When I'm using these two devices all the time, the, the 13 Pro, it does not last very long anymore. I end up having to charge it at about one o'clock, like if I wake up and I use my phone in the morning, I have to charge it at about one o'clock. When I go to bed with the 15 Pro, uh, I'm going to bed with about 30% of a charge left. Now, obviously, when you use a phone a lot, the battery degrades over time, uh, the more cycles it goes through. And so yes, this battery just clearly, it's gonna last less time. But also, everything you use it for, every app, all that, they are now more demanding today than they were when the iPhone 13 came out. And so if you're going to pick up a 13 and save that money, you might wanna pick up an external charger with this as well because uh, it's just bound to happen that you're gonna be somewhere and you need to get it. They have a lot of those cool like uh, MagSafe ones that just kind of a little backpack for your phone. So I'd recommend getting one of those. But if battery life is like one of your main concerns, then definitely go with the 15 Pro. The 15 Pro Max has an even bigger battery, which I just don't like that large of a phone. Actually, tell me in the comments below, do you guys like a larger phone or do you wish they kept around the iPhone 13 mini? I wish they did so bad. So let me know, do you like large phones or do you like small phones? Now, obviously with these two phones, there's going to be a pretty big price difference. If price is your only determining factor, then I definitely think you should go for the 13 Pro. Right now, the 13 Pro is selling anywhere from 650 to 750. That's a solid price for a device that is going to keep up with your everyday life. I, I went from the 13 Pro and I never really felt like it was slowing me down. So I think if, if price is your main thing, then go with the 13 Pro. However, if you can afford it, the iPhone 15 Pro, it is just overall, it's a better experience with the Dynamic Island with the display and the better cameras and Apple log and, and everything USB-C specifically, it is for sure the better phone, but it's $999 when you start. Now, these phones, they will last you a few years, and so maybe that extra few hundred dollars is worth it for you in the long run. So who do I actually recommend upgrade their phone from the 13 Pro to the 15 Pro? Really, it's just people who are doing a lot of photography, a lot of videography, and they're heavy users, and so they're using their phone all day, and they need that extra battery life. For the rest of people, I don't think you need to upgrade from the 13 Pro. Honestly, I think you'd be totally fine. Maybe you have an older iPhone than that. Get the 13 Pro. It's gonna last you know, another couple years. It's a solid device. The battery isn't fantastic, but you are buying this because it's a great budget option. I'm sure on the refurbished store you can find it for way cheaper than the 650, but honestly, if you're somebody with the 13 Pro, 13 Pro Max, I don't know that I would upgrade right away to the 15 Pro or the 15 Pro Max. You might wanna wait until the 16 Pro because really the differences aren't all that big. Yes, there's a few things for professional power users that they will find handy, but for the majority of people out there, you're an office worker, you're a parent, maybe you're a student, you would be just fine with the 13 Pro. And so as always, Apple wants to be a green company. I think the biggest thing you can do is keep the current phone that you have. And then once your phone feels like it's so sluggish that it's actually getting in the way of your workflow, getting in the way of your life, 
then it's time to upgrade. Now, I will say, the 15 Pro, it is a fantastic smartphone. You won't go wrong if you buy it. You're not going to be disappointed. The question is, can you hold off until there's something cooler? Because there's always an upgrade cycle right around the corner. So if you can hold off, do it. Maybe your phone is older than the 13. Maybe if you have a 12 or an 11, which my dad you know, just had, I think you should probably upgrade now. But if you're on the 13, maybe stick around for a little while, see what's coming out next. Hopefully Apple comes out with a foldable phone. That'd be amazing. Go ahead and like this video if you found it helpful. And if you like this video, you will probably love this video of the iPhone 15 Pro where I did a really, really high, cool cinematic video on the iPhone 15 Pro. So go ahead, check that out right here. I'll see you all in the next one.